Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our third example of how to work with an RC circuit. Here in this circuit, we do have a voltage source, but it plays a limited role. Notice that initially we have the switch closed, and maybe I'll make this line a little bit longer so you can see that when the switch was up here, we had a continuous circuit, and that meant that we have current flowing through this part of the circuit. There would be no current flowing through the capacitor because once the capacitor is filled, the current through the capacitor stops. But that means that if there's no current through this branch, when the switch is, is closed, that was before time equals zero, that means that the voltage across this branch right here, V sub B, is equal to the voltage across the capacitor because no voltage would be dropped across that one ohm resistor because there's no current through there. We are supposed to find the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. We're supposed to find the energy on the capacitor as a function of time. And so those two things are what we're looking for. What we're going to do is before we open the switch at time equals zero, we're going to find out what the energy is stored in the capacitor and we need to find the voltage across here, which means we're going to deal with the circuit as it is here. Let's redraw the circuit without the capacitor in it. So what we have here is we have the voltage source of 10 volts. We have a single capacitor. Let's see, we have a three ohm capacitor here. We have a nine ohm capacitor there. And we can remove the one ohm resistor because it has no function and draw the one capacitor there. So that would be the equivalent circuit with the switch closed. Three ohms. 9 ohms, and here we have the 10 millifarad capacitor. Since there is no current through here, so in this case I equals zero, which means that the voltage drop here can be related to the voltage drop there. So we can say that the voltage across the 9 ohm resistor, so the voltage, which is VB, so let me write VB, is equal to the 10 volts times the ratio of 9 volts divided by, oh, nine, not 9 volts, that would be 9 ohms, divided by 3 ohms plus 9 ohms. That's 9 twelfths, 0.75 times 10 volt, which is equal to, and this is V sub B, 7.5 volts. So that means we have 7.5 volts across here, which means initially we have 7.5 volts across the capacitor. So we can write that V initial across capacitor, across capacitor is equal to 7.5 volts. What happens now? Oh, also let's, before we go on, let's also find the energy on the capacitor initially. So the energy initially when time is equal to zero is equal to one half the capacitance times the voltage squared and that would be the initial voltage squared. So this would be equal to one half times 10 millifarads, that's 10 to the minus three farads times 10, and then V initial would be 7.5 volts squared. All right, 7.5 we squared at, and divide by times two. 0.01, and that gives us zero, 0.28 joules of initial energy. So that's the initial energy at time equals zero, 0 0.28 joules, and the initial voltage across capacitor of 7.5 volts. So the difference between this example and the two that we saw before is that we have a source in there which sets up the initial conditions. We weren't simply not given the initial conditions, we had to figure them out because we had the source in it. But once we open the switch, we basically disconnect the source and this 3 ohm resistor from the circuit, and we now have this as the remaining circuit, which means after time equals zero, in other words, when time becomes greater than zero, at this point, we have a new equivalent circuit. The equivalent circuit would not be a single 10 ohm resistor matched up with a 10 millifarad capacitor, which means from this we can find our time constant. So the time constant, which is equal to the equivalent resistance times the capacitance, is equal to 10 ohms times 10 times 10 to the minus 3 farads, 
which is equal to 10 times that's 100, that's 0.1 seconds. So we have a time constant of one tenth of one second, which means after five time constants, the capacitor would be fully discharged in this case. Five time constants would be a half a second. All right, next what we need to do is find the voltage across the capacitor. We can say that the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time is equal to the initial voltage across the capacitor times e to the minus t over tau. That's a general equation. The initial voltage is known at 7.5 volts, so the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time is equal to 7.5 volts. We multiply that times e to the minus t over tau, which is 0.1 seconds. Or we can also write it as e to the minus 10t, if you want to simplify that. So this gives us the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. What about the energy across capacitor as a function of time? Well, since the energy, u as a function of time, is equal to 1 half times the capacitance times the voltage as a function of time squared, we'll write it like this. We simply have to square that amount, and so we can say that the energy as a function of time is equal to 1 half times the capacitance, 10 times 10 to the minus 3 farads, times the voltage squared, which in this case would be 7.5 volts times e to the minus t over 0.1 seconds quantity squared. And of course, we can go ahead and work this out and then put a 2 in the exponent. And so when we do that, we get the following 7.5 squared e to the 3 minus equals. And so this gives us the initial, well that makes sense, it gives us the initial energy 0 0.28 joules times e to the minus, since we squared that we make that 2t over 0 0.1 seconds. And this here will give us the energy on the capacitor as a function of time. And that's how we do that.